Hello, this is the Let Me Ask You This podcast, and I am your host, E.B. Hepworth, and you could be anywhere right now, but you have chosen to be here listening in on these conversations, and I just want to say I really don't take that lightly. It means the absolute world that you would be here, and with that being said, maybe you're thinking, E.B., where have you been? (laughs) Well, um, yeah, our family has been going through it, and in this episode, I just kind of wanted to catch everyone up to speed on the season our family has been walking in and why podcasts have not been regularly uh, released. And so in this episode, we have my wonderful husband, Zachary Hepworth. He is just honestly such a good podcaster. Um, He speaks in like post-it notes. He's so beautiful. Um, And so uh, yeah, he is just, we're just chatting through what this season has looked like and how just rest and hope are congruent. And so, um, yeah, at the end of the day, my vision for these podcasts um, are specifically for every conversation for you to feel seen. And just that though you might be walking through hard things, you don't have to be lonely in the midst of them. And yeah, Jesus has just been meeting us in such beautiful ways in this season and inviting us into a deep, deep rhythm of rest. And I really, really hope that these conversations and this conversation specifically speaks to where you're at and blesses you. So welcome to the Let Me Ask You This podcast. My name is Evie Hepworth, your host, and this is my wonderful husband, Zach Hepworth, and he's helping me on this first episode because it has been a while, and I basically wanted to come out here and just reintroduce my vision for this podcast. Um, I tend to drop things because I have to do a lot of, like when it comes to podcasts, for example, I'll drop being consistent with it because I have to carry all the hats. So not only do I record, but then I have to edit, then I have to make all the Instagram bits. Like there's a lot of facets to this. And so all of that to say, I am reintroducing this podcast and pretending like I'm starting from square one. (laughs) So I thought it would be really great to bring my husband on to kind of interview me, share how we got to where we're at in our current season. So I think everybody's wondering, I'm wondering the people on Instagram, people on YouTube, everywhere fragmented across the digital universe. Everyone's wondering, so how did you end up here? Gosh, how did I end up here? We have been in a season of war, would be the best way to display it. Come right out and just, I'm just going to start, um, start out by saying that we've been in a season of war. And if you know absolutely nothing about our family, we are the Hepworths. We have our big two which we adopted in 2017 from Liberia, West Africa. And we have our twin, Miracle Twins, which were born in 2021. And the SparkNotes version is that when 2018, we got the diagnosis of our son with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is a terminal genetic mutation um, that basically has taken over a lot of our life's attention. And in the last three years, almost three years, we have been in a clinical trial for our son, Asa, which is out of state and requires a crazy amount of travel, crazy amount of sacrifice for our family. And so that is one, that is kind of where I come from when I'm saying that we've been in a season of war. Um, and also one of the fair reasons why we really haven't been consistent with the, exactly. the podcast. Thank you. Yeah. that <laughs> There's I a appreciate... lot of logistics to that. So it, yeah. it kind of, we, we might've bit off more than we could chew with doing some podcast stuff in that window for sure and just learning how to ask for help and like learning what would be the space where people could actually take things off like i think that's i mean we've learned so 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 much over the years of creating content and having conversations and and ministry and just relationships and the i think the nucleus of what we learned is that uh, it takes a village (laughs) teamwork makes the dream work right so so um how did i get where i'm at the last uh year, I would say just to update people, 2023 was really a season for Zach and I, we pressed into healing. There was so much grief, um, underneath the, um, gosh, I, I want to say gravel of our hearts, but just the deep, like we had to really go and do a big renovation on our heart and our family. And, um, in the process of everything with the clinical trial with ASA, and uh, moving and our season has done our family has gone through a huge season of change 
we 2023 sprinted after healing, sprinted after deep wounds that we knew were there and we knew that we wanted to go after, uh, or we knew that we wanted God to touch, but we went after them and God really met us there. And so uh, when I say went after healing, we really committed to counseling. Um, my, I committed to um, monthly counseling, EMDR specifically, um, pressing into physical, like just got like down to doing blood work, uh, oh, okay. like naturopathic, got it. Uh, deep parasite cleanse. That. Yeah. Um, mold, <laughs> like, you know, my gosh, what else? Liver cleanse, like everything. Like last year was really our season of like, yeah. Would, deep would, healing. Would you say it was like holistic healing, mind, body, soul, yeah. spirit, you know, yeah. all that. That's why you're here to help me. Yeah. It. You're communicating. But yeah. You're uh-huh. unwrapping the thought and I'm yes, listening to exactly. it. So I can kind of like, <laughs> you know, give a summary. Yeah. 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 So how I got here was really, uh, pressing after healing. And I think that's the thing about healing is that typically you feel like you're not making any progress. Um, there is, it's hard to measure. Um, and it's not linear. You know, people hear that all the time. The healing is not linear. And then all of a sudden you'll be in a scenario where you will see the grace of your intentional, partnering of healing where you're like, wow, a year ago, I would have responded differently or even the renewing of your mind, right? If we want to bring it into that kind of language where you're like, wow, though my situation right now is struggling (laughs) or though to my eye, I see like I'm now been walking in healing and the Lord's been doing such a work on my heart and mind that now I can look at this and see different, see it from his vantage point, right? And so, no, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, you know, I almost look at it in, in terms of our family healing, that is, as like an investment. You spend a lot up front and it's really hard to measure the return in well the said. first year or the first six months or whatever. But over time, you really start to see those results. Like, you know, now that we're, I don't know, I'd say probably what, seven months into being on the other side, or maybe four or five months is a better um, measurement. But you start, we're starting to see some of those results that we have. 100%. And I think that's from. the thing about intentionally healing and investing your grief and your heart in healing is that it always pays dividends. There's always a return. Um, but that's the thing about investing, right? Period. Over a long period. period of time. Yeah. yeah. And um Gosh, talk about investing your your heart and your wounds now and being able to watch the investment that you're giving your children by you really tackling those wounds and and our marriage, us investing last year deeply. Like God over ten years, this year will be ten years of marriage. God took twenty twenty three to use as, as such a connecting and braiding year because it was so hard, so much turmoil. Our 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 yeah. relationship in our life together as we've built it we've been um through god has just <laughs> made us warriors by default <laughs> he's 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 given us uh a challenging yeah different uh set of just seasons that we've had to endure together right and so in that in prior seasons i didn't partner with you in sure. the hard things that we were facing and 2023 was a true season of our marriage where it was like we are with each other in this. We are working on our communication. We are working on our, um, gosh, friendship. Our own, like, right. it felt like we reached such a new level within our relationship. And watching how that affected our family last year, watching how that affected my healing, uh, you open up space for me to just really go after. Um, yeah, it was like, and that's. I will say the other thing about healing is that it tends to birth vision and it tends to birth dreams because all of a sudden you're seeing things through God's heart and God's eye. And he's like, I really want to do this with you. Like I want to like, you know, you know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. So would you say how we got here back to the original question is through you really contending for your own personal healing, healing within your family. And in that process, you found the restoration of dreams and, restoration of vision for certain things and so now we're here now we're here is that yeah that's so well said thank you (laughs) i will ramble and i'm so glad that you can that's so good that's what this is yes yes so but one of the things that i found interesting about what you were saying is you know you kind of made a little bit of joke about it and it's kind of funny but go god made us warriors you know well 
it is kind of funny, but we're all we're all fighting for something, right? Right. Like all of us. There's different things that have happened to us generationally in our childhood. There's different dreams we might have. Now, what we're fighting for might not be what other people are fighting for. What you're fighting for might not what be might not be what whomever in, you know, Michigan or, you know, Minnesota right. or California or Oregon, whoever you are listening. Maybe they're not fighting for that, but they're right. fighting for something. Right. Right. So we're kind of all contending for something. So anyways, this is something you've been contending for. This is exactly this space right here that you yeah. want to open up. Yeah. Okay. And just uh, and and this like fostering conversations, honest conversations about men and women just deeply like that's why I made this podcast, right? That, that we would have conversations where it's like, let's talk about the real stuff of life. And let's be honest about our questions, like in the scope of faith in the, in the conversations of family and the conversations of friendships, like there is so much of the world that's gray and I will never, ever um, claim to have answers to so much of the gray, but that was one of my heart. um, One of my kind of my heart with starting this podcast was like, let's talk about it. You know, let me ask you this. And then someone sharing their journey of healing of, you know, going off their God given dreams, going like doing family, like, um, like just using the things that God grafted in them to be an expression of, of his gospel. So, so that's what this podcast will be. And, um, we had like, you know, five episodes, I think four or five episodes last season. Um, and then our life got flipped. We moved. It was, there was so much busyness. And so it just kind of, that was something we had to put on the back burner. But my hope this season, um, and as you're listening is that we'll be a little bit more steady with, um, with guests consistent. That's one of the words. (laughs) Exactly. That's out of the healing out of this season. Yeah. Consistency. Consistency, Um, and yeah. And, and team like bringing people into this. So yeah. then I don't get burned out. Therefore it's not all on me. It's, it's a team effort. So exactly. Yeah. But what are, what are the things you're really hoping to dig into with, with some of your guests Are there specific topics that you think even just, you know, 2024, we're in a new year, a new time, a new space, new things are happening in the world around us. New things are happening in your heart. New things are happening in our city. Is there something specific that you really feel, you know, you want to dig into this? Year? I- I think something that I've really been so fascinated by in the, I mean, in the last decade of my life, but something that's really, um, the vision has been, um, a lot more clear in the last couple months has been how every single person God makes, he gives a very specific message like on their life. And, um, he uses moments of deep wounds, pain, victories, gifts. There's this huge, just like canvas of just this like kind of, purpose that's just like boom planted in somebody and that specific person because of their experience in wounds and all the above like I just said they have a very specific way that they share God and so kind of bringing all of these different people to the table and being like what's God speaking to you what's your life message if you could share anything for the whole for the rest of your life if you could share one message like what would it be like and, and it's in those conversations that you get a mine out the different beautiful aspects and like treasures of God. And I can't tell you how, I mean, in, in my faith journey, but even especially since God's kind of narrowed in this beauty of how he's put that in people in the last couple of months as they're sharing just what they're going through or regardless of what it is, I'm like leaning in and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I grab something from that and I'm yeah. like, dang, like if you weren't who you are, if God, then, and you weren't sharing this and you weren't leaning into like the call on your life, I wouldn't be like hearing Mm. this. This is, and it affects people when you hear these different dialects of how God speaks through different people. It's inspiring. And so that's one of my main visions is this is like, what's the message on your life? And would this be a table that you could share it? You know, that's really good. Would you say that the message on your life is similar to that one dish that you cook really, really well? Yes. So each person has... It's your go-to. Has their go-to recipe, whether it's a salad... Well, if you're Zach Hepworth, then you have three dishes, (laughs) not just one, because you're such a good cook. No, I mean, I think I maybe have (laughs) one excellent one. So everyone has an excellent one. Yeah. And so you're, you're collecting a gourmet spread of these amazing conversations 
very textured, lots of flavor to these conversations. Charcuterie, if you will. <laughs> and yeah. everyone's sitting at the table. I love that. And yes. Everyone grab a plate. Everyone grab a plate. Dish up. Dish up. Hang out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some cool. conversations might move. You know, that's what's so amazing about the Spirit of God is like, he will, you will hear what you're supposed to hear. Everyone has a different palate. Everybody has a different palate. I might not want the pickles, but. <laughs> you might you might want extra pickles on your exactly spicy chicken you know sandwich exactly Chick Fil A. <laughs> yeah, so okay. that is that's my heart for it, Very and cool. um, I really I believe um, there's something about just like being honest and just having a bunch of people that are like I don't have the answers, and um, the the Lord said to me couple days ago, cur- the difference, courage is sharing what you've been through. Vulnerability is sharing what you're going through. And I was thinking about how, um, even facilitating those, you know, when the Lord releases certain people to have conversations about seasons that, what things are going through, yeah. what that does like to the person listening when it's like, gosh, I just happened to turn on this podcast and I'm just driving on the road to pick up my kids or on a run or whatever. And like them by sharing what they're going through, it's like, boom and it plants something and it's like somebody just gave me language and that is also going back to the conversation of healing when someone else when god uses his bride to give you language through someone else of maybe you know a situation you're in it is like oh whoa like that's wild you can't manufacture that there's no veneer experience like that is god like and when you are able to then translate language for what you're going through or whatever that's empowering because then you're able to work through it even more and it it's one more step into really like walking in wholeness in that thing. So, so yeah. Would you say that this podcast is for anyone? Does this resonate deeply? That's what, what I'm asking. For anyone who still has the desire to fight for the promises of God over their life. 100%. Is that what this is? For? That's what this is, baby. Is that what this is all about? 100%. Is that why we're here? That's why we're here. People fighting for the hope of glory that I, like the Lord would create people who want durable hope within them. Yeah. So then when you are in a season of grief or, or whatever, right. no matter what season you find that there'd be such a durable hope within you that you would soar. And, and this is going to bring like texture and practical conversation. Yeah. Just testimony. Yeah. Around that idea yeah. that notion yeah people walking in the promises of the lord love it yeah i'm fired up thanks baby i'll be tuning in for this season <laughs> you better be tuning season in. one you'll be on it a lot so is it season one <laughs> this is probably season 1.5 Five. <laughs> <laughs> not quite season two but I, I i'll probably just continue season one um or i don't know i haven't got that far as i'm listening to this it just sounds like it's it's really not a finished product space it's more of of people who are in process who aren't necessarily not not that you're going to exclude people who you know might be a finished quote unquote finished product right sure. but it's like there's more yeah. people who are are really in the thick yeah because I mean even if you write a book on a specific topic written the whole thing published it's affecting readers you can still be in process as a believer as a daughter as a son like and so. I think that's like the gift of hopefully this space is like the message on your life, the part you're still in process at and let's go deep and let's ask questions and let's allow people to feel the sameness of the Lord and the givenness of him in these conversations yeah. and in the testimonies of the people we're interviewing. So that's good. Yeah. So, so oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, so with all that, hopefully I just wanted like a small stint, like sharing a little bit about the vision of it. And I wanted even you to share, like, I would love your, um, could you like give readers a kind of a view of what the last, you know, uh, season of our life has looked like and, um, the season of de- dependence that we're in and kind of unpack that. And then I'll shoot off from that. For me, what I realized is that Every family has, well, let's, let's take a step back. Every individual has a soul and I won't go into defining that. I won't go into the weeds of that, but if you want me to define it, just get a hold of Evie and I will send you all my definition of a soul. I have an entire breakdown of what I mean by that word and in the way that I look at it, but every individual has a soul 
and every family has a soul. And this is just stuff for me that helps me sort of understand where I'm at, where my family's at. Um, it's just helpful for me to visualize these things. So I, I started to realize like, man, like our family has a soul. There's this, this set of, uh, you know, mental capacity. There's this, uh, this will, this desire collectively of all of us and now there's six of us and it's, it's a mix of things, you know? And anyways, I realized one of the things I realized within that is that you and I have really had really set the tone in, in the soul of our family to work for rest. In other words, you know, we are, um, what I would say is operating in the opposite reality of how God established the world, which is he actually set the world in rest. Like with his finished work, he put the world into a state of, of resting in, in Christ and resting in the father's work. And you and I were, you know, working for that rest instead of working from that rest. And, and that idea for me is that we were, you know, once we do this, then we can rest. Or, you know, once we accomplish that, then we can rest. Or, uh, you know, once this is finished, then I can rest. And it's sort of that never-ending state of always trying to get to the next thing. But it wasn't for the sake of necessarily accomplishing things. What I found for us, it was more or less earning the right to rest, right? is what it felt like to me. And so I'm realizing in this season when it, when it looks like reliance and it looks like dependence and it looks like trust is rest. Like trust and dependence and reliance looks a lot like rest often. And rest is not laziness. Rest is simply a mind you know, a mental state and a heart posture and a way that you go about setting up your week and setting up your month and setting up your year. You're, you're coming out of a place of like victory and a place of provision. It's already happened. There's already a, a sense of victory about your day. There's already a sense of provision about your day and you're coming and you're stewarding what's in front of you, right? So like right now in this moment, I need to focus on this podcast. My mind is not running about all the other things that I have to do in order to feel like I can rest at the end of the day. Today, I'm, I'm just going to focus on this. So really simplifying the focus and, yeah, um, yeah. coming at it from a place of... Well, the worst rest, thing so. about, I think, what we have experienced with this is that these are conversations that, like, we knew better. Like, like when it comes to rest, like... It's kind of one of those things where it's like we people have been talking about this yeah, for a long time. People are talking meant. about yeah. I don't no, think that's I what's what so crazy is that until you encounter the lack, until you have a head-on collision with the lack of rest within your rhythms of life and the way your family is operating, you will not because you just be, get into such a routine of not yeah, resting. Totally. And then you're wondering, gosh, I, I feel like anxious. I'm feeling overwhelmed. You, Zach, always says your ability. Well, I'm going to translate because I don't know if this is exactly how you say it, but you say when you're multitasking, that is evidence of lack of rest because you all of a sudden you're like, oh, you're, you're scattered. And so you're trying to accomplish more things than because you're assuming that there isn't enough time to do yeah. all of those different things individually. Yeah. And so um, I, I totally agree. Like knowing in my head, oh, I want to play a work from a place of rest and, and, you know, engraving the scripture like come away with me i'll show you how to take a real rest learn the unforced rhythms of grace right. we've read that for years we right. have um you know in our heart desired for it but this year we were like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. they're like we need serious bumpers yeah in our rest game big time we need like like bowling right like the bumpers like i need serious serious bumpers to protect the rest within my soul For sure. and how I steward rest will instantly flow into how, how my children steward rest. And, um, Oh man. So for the person listening, did you have anything else you wanted to say or can I ask you? Go ahead. For the person listening, what would you say were the biggest markers like in your mind of like, Whoa, I'm not resting. Yeah. Um, I do want to give an example of what I mean, like a practical example of like rest. Sure. So I want to loop back to that. Don't let me forget. Okay. But 
I realized like I was so unsatisfied in everything. Like no matter what it was, I remember, I think one of the most evident moments for me was when it was just you and I, no kids. We were on the big island, we're sitting at a restaurant. It's absolutely beautiful atmosphere. The beach is right there. And I just wanted to go home. Like inside, I remember looking at you. I was just like, I'm. Oh, I was like, I'm over this. I just want to go home. I, 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 not even enjoying this moment. Like it was like my mind couldn't concentrate on the present. I realized in that moment, amongst several other moments, with that being a big one for me, that my mind just wasn't present. Like I couldn't, I couldn't focus on what was in front of me. My mind is is out in the future. So that gift of each moment just being taken from me. It's evaporated. Yeah. So that, I would say that was a big indicator for me is like this, this distant focus, um, five years, 10 years, 15, like, it's just like, you can just keep pushing the mark further out and, and think about in the name of achieving in the name of what, you know, it could be a number of things, achieving safety, stability, fear, like things, all yeah. things that, besides fear, right? Not a good thing. Well, no, but just But yeah, all, like, all the other good things and some of the things that aren't good, you know, 100%, all in the name of those things. 100%. Even as you say that, when you, when you said, um, you know, I wanted, I just wanted to be home. Yeah. I imagine like the picture of just your spirit being like, I just want to be home. Like rest is in home, meaning heaven. And I, being like, yeah, I think ah, there was a, I think there I was. I just want to be home. For That's sure. That's how you define rest. Is like truly like a stillness with the Lord, the contentment in the moment. To your point, though, I think that is home for us here. I right? agree. Is in the moment, in the present with what God has given you. And I think that there was a deeper longing to be back in that place, right? Totally. Which is where I really feel now. And so I would you say when you that feel that presence and like peace in the presence and peace with what is in front of me right? Yeah. versus like trying to really like cast my mind out? Like I said, five, 10, 15 right. years. So would you say that inner turmoil, if someone's feeling that inner turmoil of like contentment or they're like, I'm having a hard time like settling in, would you say Dis- most discontentment? Like Di- or sorry, discontentment. Yes, yes, yes. If someone's really settling in to the inner turmoil of discontentment, would you say that that's often evidence of an unrestful heart? A hundred percent. I think, I, I mean... I don't think I would say that a heart that is restful is a content heart. Now it doesn't mean that sometimes you don't experience moments or, you know, maybe a day of discontentment or maybe a couple days. Right. But we're talking about this like perpetual state. I'm not talking about like, you know, Oh, one hour I'm not content. The next hour I am content. I'm talking about this like deep underlying discontentment. Right. And not being able to figure out what is going on. Right. Well, so let me ask you this then. If if you're someone who's in a rough season, straight up, I'll, I'll take it as far as the example of Joseph in prison. Where does rest exist in a place where you are sitting in a stagnant dream? Like, how do you even approach the promise of rest when you are so unsatisfied with where you're at. Like standard poster child answer. Finding contentment in the promises of God. Because truly, that's the only thing that produces hope. Like building something doesn't produce hope. Achieving something doesn't produce hope. Uh, understanding, like, you know, understanding and mastering a subject doesn't bring hope. Um, You know, like, getting married doesn't bring hope. Having kids doesn't bring hope. It's truly, like, the only thing that generates that deep level of abiding hope are the promises of God. It's the way that this experience that we're all having together the human experience was built it was packaged the promises of god were packaged it's the with anchor hope. yeah it's the anchor so it's it's one thing to say that you know it's one thing to say like oh, i'm hoping in the promises of god exactly. it's another thing to hope in the promises of god 
You know what's so crazy? So, I learned this a couple of days ago. I had um, coffee with uh, an amazing woman of the Lord, and she was telling me the Hebrew picture for hope is a hook, literally that you put on a wall so you can hang things on it. And I loved that. Like to just hang your there you go like yeah that that literally it blew my mind I'm like That's dang crazy. that you can actually hang that there's a yeah. there's a purpose for hope to hold your things yeah. uh, and and then the Hebrew picture for shalom or or trust I can't remember um, was gritted teeth clenched teeth and even the feeling that you know sometimes you think trust oh I'm just dancing through a lily field yeah. but this clenching this gritting your teeth of like, I'm going to trust. But I love that. I think it's a poster child answer for a reason because like, totally. and even something that's so hard for me is that even the promises of God, well, sometimes people will say uh, a desire or a dream for their life and they'll stamp the promise of God on it. Right. And, and in the language and the conversations of faith, that's so hard that, that like, and I don't ever want to instantly discount it because who am I to say that God didn't come to them tangibly and say, this is a promise. You know, the way that the father came to Adam and, and promised him a, a son and Sarah mm-hmm. and she laughed like that's, but when we say promise of God for yeah. the context of this conversation, the promise of God that he will always be with you, that he'll never leave you. These promises of like that yeah. is the promise of God that, that there's no, moment totally. that he's not with you. And totally. so even as you say, you know, your answer of like, really, like if you are desiring rest in a stagnant season of stolen dreams or just whatever, you find yourself in a, in a remote place that's very detached from what you want for your life. The withness of the Lord in that is where rest will grow. Yeah. And be found the with that I'm with Jesus, that I might be in a season of walking, which is a promise. It's a promise. Yes. The withness, like the givenness that he's fully, that his blood and body was enough, like that his like. And so that for me, especially walking through, you know, watching a a child with a terminal disease and wonder, and just uh, some days are heavier than others. And it's that withness that's like, no, the promise that he's with me is what allows me to be able to continue one foot in front of another um, or a million others, you know, dreams that we've had robbed, you know. I want to I want to continue on that because yes, you had a picture. Well, I think it's important to say a couple of things, which yeah. is hope, right, is the pinnacle. I'd say hope is the pinnacle of what uh, infuses the soul with vitality and strength, right? So if you don't have hope, your soul becomes withered and weak, right? So you need hope. Like that's the primary substance to fuel the soul. You need hope. But it's also okay to be excited about dreams, right? So I'm not saying don't get excited about exactly. dreams. Exactly. I'm glad Just you separated that. Just don't put hope in them. There's, there's no hope to be found in them. 100%. So there's no hope there. So if you're looking to put hope there, just know 100% of the time it's not there. You're not going to find it. Yeah. Right? It's, it is not, it's like fishing in a field. Like if you throw your fishing pole in a field, a hundred percent of the time, 10 times out of 10, you're not, you're not going to reel fish. anything in. That's so like good. there is no hope to be found in those dreams. Now there is plenty of excitement and there is plenty of fruit potentially that can come out of those dreams. Like, I mean, get excited, dream, pray about it, give it to God. Like, get after it a hundred percent. But the hope only comes from the promises of God, which are, you know, I don't need to, you know, outline all of them crack open, you know, the good word, the promises right, that are yeah. throughout the scriptures. Yeah. Right. So those are the promises we hope in. Right. So I think for me, you know, um, there was a little bit of muddying the water and all that for me, like in my experience, right. Of yeah. Kind of like, maybe tagging the word hope onto some of these dreams I had and, and in the name of comfortable life, you know, right? Not just excitement. I don't know about that. I'm not sure for me still working through that one, yeah. but, but, but <laughs> either way, like I know that there was a little bit of like muddy in the waters and not being clear on, I'm not hoping in this. Right. I'm excited about this. Yeah. Like in my internal thoughts, yeah. my internal dialogue, I'm excited about this. This is an awesome idea. This is a great opportunity. I'm excited, but I'm not hoping in it. For me, it was, it wasn't that clear. So moving forward for me, it is clear. Like I'm hoping in the promises of God. Yeah. 
but I'm excited about, yeah. you know, opportunities and dreams and stuff that's on the yeah. table. Well, and so. anything that's separate from his hand, I will not hope in. Anything separate from right. his gaze, I will not hope in. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Like we'll, promise we'll, we'll like, we'll left field. Okay. Why is rest important? Like this, our season, we've been confronted with yeah. the lack of rest that our souls have been operating in. So now us implementing a r- rhythm of a restful heart. Why is it important? What have, what fruit have we seen? Yeah. My opinion or my interpretation as of now with rest is rest is the, the pace and the level of responsibility and the grace that God gives you in a given season. Okay. So within that, there is, he, he knows your capacity and he knows your ability to operate within that. So it's like he almost sets the stage perfectly for you within rest, right? But for someone like me and someone like you who gets riled up and gets excited and wants to do good things for God and <laughs> wants to like accomplish things. Totally. And like someone who just is like, I really want to get after things and run, you know? Um, you can outpace all of those parameters that God set and can find yourself off getting way ahead of the the given tasks at hand and, and sort of like the given responsibilities in that season that God's asking you to focus on just this right here. Yeah. But you get so pumped up and yeah. so excited that you get outside of that, you know, that space, that mm-hmm. rhythm of rest, right? So I think for me why it's important is because operating out of rest And making sure that not only do you have like a heart of Sabbath, but you also create practical um, rhythms within your weekly schedule to Sabbath to rest, like deeply rest and unplug and connect with the promises God, like the promises God has given you that you prayed for forever. It's really important once they manifest and show up in your life to connect with those and take time to like let them create gratitude in your heart rather than trying to like pray more promises down, you know? So So I think that like when you create space for that, you don't burn out. I don't think that And then you can run the race with endurance (laughs) because you have a durable hope (laughs) and rest within you. Exactly. (laughs) I think that's exactly why it's important. So what I've found in the past for us, for myself, is that it's like almost like God speaks to us. He gives us vision. He anoints us with a fresh grace or, you know, maybe for, for people who have a hard time unpacking that terminology, a fresh uh, anointing of grace. He gives you the, the capacity and the ability and the resources and the tools, all that. He gives you all that to be able to accomplish what's in front of you. And then we, we just, we go way too hard. We we say yes to way too many things. That's, I think it's why I'm, it's important to have a really really firm no, and and understand your focus and understand the vision in the season. And so, you know, by doing that, what I'm finding for us in the past several months is like, wow, I'm really operating from this place of rest. I'm really enjoying it. I don't feel stressed out. I'm yeah. able to focus on the present and I'm able to really like feast upon, mm-hmm. take in and commune with the promises that God has given me. The things that I prayed for in the past that have shown up now in my life, I'm actually able to really connect and get in touch with those things. And that's so good. Really has fueled my soul. And it's my so spirit. good. And what I hear you saying is like this, you will not accomplish the things and the dreams God has put inside of you apart from rest. Jesus modeled it. (laughs) Like the making of the world, how the father modeled it. You will not do it apart from rest. And even there's such a grace, like I think in soccer or in any athlete, any game they have a term head on a swivel yeah and i just kind of imagine that as like the posture of rest because like i love how you put that like you can't look back and see that you're standing in a place that you prayed for or like look back at what he's done or look forward for what you know maybe he's giving you vision for like rest is head on a swivel well head on a swivel means like always looking around 
Right. Is that what no, you like, mean? well, just and being aware. God, where are? What oh, are you asking me to do? Always being aware. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Good. Not That's distract good. in a distracting way. Yeah. Um, but I mean, in the context of like, okay, head on a swivel. Okay, God. Because if you're not slowing down to have your right. head on a swivel and look, but okay, wow, look what God. God, am I grateful? Am I, am I like taking a internal, right. full diagnostic of like, wow. And I think that's also the lack of rest that our culture operates in. I think that's also why silent prayer is so intimidating yeah. for our, our generation is yeah. because there's such un like just the stagnancy, just the inner yeah. angst within the soul that doesn't know how to quiet before the Lord, just five, 10, 15 minutes of just silence. We haven't developed enough rest and cultivated that restful spirit to find comfort in the silence with him. Right. That's why we're going in our prayer closet and just praying the, you know, praying the yeah. the building down. And it's like, oh man. It makes me think of that maxim like activity isn't progress. Yeah. Right. It doesn't always equal progress because the Israelites were super active in the desert. Right. They wandered and wandered and wandered and wandered, but they didn't really necessarily get anywhere. They didn't, it didn't produce anything. So sometimes it's like, it's so easy to like get into the, you know, the space of, uh, our quiet time with the Lord and just kind of have activity. Right. right. We don't really get anywhere. Right. It's just like activity for the sake of activity and it doesn't create anything productive. It doesn't create anything of substance, you know? Yeah. And I definitely, um, can relate to that kind yeah. of coming in and just being active, you know, for the sake of being active. Yeah. And the silent prayer I've found has been really, yeah, yeah. really impactful for, for um yeah just just transformative moments yeah um which is intimidating to slow down and close things out well that's what's so supernatural about rest yeah. is that when you do prioritize it somehow in his kindness what would have taken more time he does like the way that god it makes no sense it makes no sense. The way no that sense. a grace will come yeah. on somebody like it is. Yeah. And um, yeah, it has to be a priority. What about when you're doing these things, you're Sabbathing, you're uh -huh. turning off your phone. You're like absolutely cerebrally and spiritually and emotionally trying to lean into the season you're in, but you still feel this just grinding within your spirit. Something is uh, something's not right. I don't, I don't know. I haven't felt that, um, for quite some time, to be honest. Like I just have not felt that grinding. Yeah. Well, maybe I should, shouldn't say I haven't felt it, but I haven't, it hasn't been a, the way I like to think about feelings inside internally is like loud or quiet, right? It's like the grinding in the past was so loud. Right. Again, I guess that's maybe where I associate with like, I haven't heard it It was so loud that it was kind of just normal. Sure. In this season, it feels like, um, it has been so quiet, if any. And in those times where I feel it coming up, I, I think it just depends on the individual. This is a very hard question to answer, but I think, and this is all of this is descriptive, not prescriptive. I'm just describing my own thoughts. I'm not prescribing any sort of methodology or just sure. saying like, oh, this is how things work. Like I'm just describing my own thoughts and yeah. my own experience. But for me, it's finding those things of rest that God has spoke to me and returning to them quicker than I would have in the past. Right. So when that grinding feeling comes up, that's the invitation to wind me up and set me on the road of anxiety. It's like that little tiny grinding gear, no matter how quiet it is, how loud it is, either way, it's an invitation to just wind you up even more and set you on a path that outpaces the level of you know, grace and responsibility you have in this season. And so for me, what I'm finding myself doing, um, one of the things is like this kind of silly exercise um, but it helps me visualize things and it helps slow my mind down. And it's this idea of breathing in the presence of God. Right. So I'll literally be in my car. I, I, maybe I'll yeah, feel you this, do this a little, lot. like, you know, s the sound of grinding kind of like bubbling up deep inside. And I'll literally just, 
and and I will actually there are certain things that I'll meditate on and, yeah. uh, and think about and recite the promises of God. You know, well, one they of the say things, when you breathe, it's Yahweh, like you're saying Yahweh. No, <laughs> it's like I, like that's actually the uh, huh. what's the term? The inflection of the inflection, the, of the or word. I don't know if it's the know. syllables, but people say it as you breathe. The actual, it's actually that you're saying Yahweh as you breathe. Yeah, that's good. So, that's would good you stuff. say? <laughs> so what you didn't know I do, the, you... I do the Yahweh meditation exercise yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you say Olive's going to join us would you say that your ability to rest is congruent with your ability to trust yeah 100% um, and not on your, only your ability to trust but what are you trusting right if your trust is again in the good and the exciting opportunities, um, you will lack the ability to rest because there are not, there is not any rest in those things. You won't find it there. So good. So if you're trusting in the promises, right? Then and you can lean into the rest. You can lean into some rest there. Um, knowing for me in this season, knowing God has gone before me, He's prepared a way, knowing that there are good works that have been set before me for the beginning of time for me to walk into, knowing that I have an inheritance in Christ, knowing that God's desire is to expand my territory, knowing that God will never leave me nor forsake me, knowing these promises, and there's more, obviously, but knowing those things, breathing those things in in moments when you know, anxiety wants to creep up. Finding my trust in those things really produces this hope. And yeah. this hope really produces adrenaline for the soul, right? This just real, like, shot of life mm -hmm. to the way that you think and yeah. the way that you approach your day. So, yeah, I think it directly yeah. correlates. And I think, I think uh, your ability to rest is the oil of your life. Like, it is what you, like, wash his feet with. So, you know, so to say, if you're doing a yeah. picture, like, it is the ultimate picture of trust. And that you would lavish your trust and rest onto him and say, you can do more with this than I could. Like, yeah. I trust you with this. That is where you'll never, like, again, going back into investing and healing, when you invest that healing or that rest into the Lord, he returns it with peace. He returns it with an increase of faith that he like, and then that's where your faith gets to just grow and grow and grow because you're looking at, wow, look what happens when I invested this in him. And that's where trust, it becomes this like, oh, like it doesn't even feel as risky. The more you walk with them, the less yeah. you're like, ah, this is the only way I can live. Yeah. This is the only For option, sure. you know? For sure. Um, and so... That's really good. Yeah, and I think even oil, like I even always imagine, uh, it almost as if you put WD-40 in like a, you know, squeaky thing, rest takes away the unsqueaky un un kind of hinges <laughs> of our soul. You know, yeah. it, it, it makes this... It takes this, the noise out of... Yeah, and it even makes obedience and yeah. less squeaky, less uh, like something that's not like... It, the rest gives joy to the obedience. That fluid motion that fluidity yes that, that flow yeah back it's just a hundred percent like yeah and even the psalm you know he you anoint my head with oil of gladness like i i always imagine that you're you're anointing you're creating space for me to rest like there is like your ultimate level of belonging is in that place of rest with him yeah. where you believe his promises and it's and i get it you're sometimes there's a fight to get there like it is yeah. a fight against flesh and blood <laughs> like right. it is a fight against yourself your schedule all the things but um gosh so much easier said than done for sure but such a reward so i want to loop back a little yeah. bit we've, yeah we've and we should probably close this up it's yeah, probably well, like an hour and a half this would be a good way now. to wrap up but we've Kay. gone on this like nice journey and i want to bring it back home to you know how did you get here, right? Sure. One of the things I want to say is I have seen you as a friend, as a girlfriend, 
as a wife and as a mom, really just say yes to um, any door that you feel the Lord is opening for you where you're going to encounter his promises and his goodness. Sometimes not understanding all that it's going to take, sometimes understanding all that it's going to take and really preparing your mind. But either way, just willing to go wherever the Lord is calling and to lay down things, no matter what the cost is, to follow him. And also being okay with it looking different, not only from what you might have expected, but also maybe looking different from friends or people you look up to. So um, I'm excited because I know that you've gone to some pretty, you've gone, you've gone into some pretty deep waters with the Lord, like deep cries out to deep. There's a depth inside of you you've seen god do some pretty deep things not only in you but in in people around you and you've watched his hand work in in mighty ways and very creative um and special ways so uh with that in mind and maybe there's some memories that are kind of like popping up oh my gosh so many as i talk about it (laughs) um if you could share one of those or a few of those just kind of talk from that place of of how this series of yeses, right, has led you up to the season we're in, the moment we're in, and how that's going to sort of overflow into this oh, podcast. Oh, man, that is a multi Yeah, it, it, there's, no, there's no <laughs> right answer. So this is just uh, setting you up yeah. to yeah, give us a little insight. Insight from my life would be okay i've learned a lot of not way like not good ways to go about life and uh something i'd love to infiltrate this space with is like my mistakes god is so kind to use the mistakes and the rushed moments i've rushed through to speak to me and that hopefully uh, my life would be a master class of um that god is still kind despite how we sometimes will outpace his grace or outrun the rest that he invites us into and to operate in. Um, And so, uh, yeah, and that there is no expiration date on people and living a life of like hope. Like sometimes I feel like I, ah, like my hope has really expired. Like I like, and, and just feeling that like God has this fresh, fresh wind of hope and rest to like sweep over and define his people and lavish his people with. And, um, in the last, you know, gosh, six months, but specifically the last month, I've needed that moment by moment hope to wrap around me to keep my eyes like, okay, you like, you can do this. He's invited you to do this. Like, and I know I'm speaking very vague right now. So a lot of people are probably translating what I mean by that, but just, um, I want to hand people that gift of being able to always see the light of hope within the moment they're in. Thanks for listening wherever you find yourself, whether it's in the car or a run or wherever. We hope that these conversations truly do um, foster a deep hope within you and that they would truly lead you to pursuing a life of peace. So until next time.